hi everyone and welcome back to my youtube channel so we are resuming the doberman tutorial um, and what we're going to do is we're going to just see how far we can get by working on the left hand side of his face um, and yeah i'll zoom in and we will just get started so what i want to do is um actually we're going to bring in this uh, little tan marking on his face first um just so obviously we've got <clears throat> um, that maps in before we do any more of the black fur so I am going to start with the granite rose from the Pablos um, I want to bring in this sort of like nice little pinkish tone as a base layer and by using a softer pencil as well um, this is going to give us a nice base layer if we wanted to come in with that slice tool at any point so we just want to follow the curvature because it's going up and over obviously the eye socket the eyebrows so we're creating that structure to our dog here and again it doesn't matter too much with this base layer because it is you know the very early stages um, I'm then going to take my burnt ochre um, this is going to be sort of the lightest orangey tone that we've got going on And again, just flicking this around. Okay, so you can see how that's just brought in that really nice orange tone, but that granite rose has given us a really nice base layer to work on top of if you only have the polychrome moss um, as the base layer you could take the ivory I'm happy to help if you, that they're the only brand of pencil um, yeah that you've got um, I'm then going to take the sanguine because this is going to bring in that really nice deep orange tone and again I'm rotating my pencil so I'm using the sharpest point and I'm following that nice curvature of the um, eyebrow. We want this to be quite a nice bright coloured rust looking colour. You, so you could also use like the russet from the um, Pablos. Um, which actually I might get out because that will work really nicely. The thing with um, black and tan Dobermans is this, this is very rusty. We want this to look very rust like in colour and we want there to be that separation between the tan and the black something that i always say is if you're not sure about a particular breed have a look at the breed standard um obviously i've been involved in dogs my whole life so um i know i know enough <laughs> but yeah i'm also just going to bring in the green gold Again, this is just going to help enhance this area. Um, the burnt ochre again. Okay, so I feel like this is a really nice, almost like a nice base layer of all those colours. Um, so we can start bringing in the detail now. So I'm going to start with the burnt sienna. blending upwards and this is just going to help again get that transition between the darker fur and the light fur so where I'm using the burnt sienna you could use the Pablo russet and this is just the polychrome moss I'm going to take that sanguine again Um, and then actually I think one of the colours that I really like to use in tan areas like this is the polychromos dark red so if I just take this and again just in this bottom area and then flicking up and then we can take our uh, uh, burnt umber or walnut brown 
flicking from those darker toned areas. And then what I'm also going to do is just take my um, Payne's Grey and just kind of flick back down very gently, very lightly. Because I don't want this to look green, but I just want to get a few of these darker hairs blending into this orangey area. And you'll see how it just helps, again, get that smooth blend between these different sections. Could also use the dark sepia. I'm using the blue because it'll give us that really nice contrast. Oh, the blue of the Payne's Grey, I should say. Okay, like so. Um, and then I think as well, I'm just going to go back to that burnt sienna, just in the middle of this tan mark. And then one last time with the green gold. Okay, yeah, happy with that. So we can do more of the fur. So I'm going to come in with the cold grey free. As a base layer, um, I'm just going to get my putty eraser and just lift this. And then we're going to get a nice even base layer down. Okay. I'm then going to take the Caran d'Ache Luminance Silver Grey because this is going to be quite a nice lighter area but it'll give this really nice smooth again it's almost like another smooth base layer we're just building up a soft soft base layer to work on and I do know I need to go darker than this but I just want to as I say smooth it out just start building up my layers till I get the tone of colour that I want Okay, so I am again just going to take the cold grey free and just coming back over in this corner and because we've got that silver grey down we've got a nice smooth layer here so we can just start to blend really nicely. And then I'm also just going to take that um, Cold Grey 5 and we want to blend out this sort of darker shadowed area here so I'm just going to come in and just take that one grey, uh, Cold Grey 5 and just flick it into the Cold Grey 3 area. And we can do the same. Uh, do I want to use the Cold Grey 5? Uh, yeah, we'll use the Cold Grey 5 here. I'm just going to bring in that shadow. Again, just flick in either way. I'm going to flick out from this dark section as well.
Okay, um, and then I am also just going to take the warm grey fog so I can see a bit of a warmer tone in this section. So if we just come over with those bluish tones that we've mapped in with the warm grey, it'll just help knock them back a little bit. And again, I'm building up all my layers here so that I've got this really soft base. Um, I'm going to take that cold grey five and I'm just blending. Just making sure, as always, that I get that really smooth, oops, smooth blend. And then that cold grey free. Um, so this is colours are rolling. Back to the warm grey four. Okay, just blending out here. Like so. Okay. So again, I'm just going to keep coming up the face. So I'm going to take the cold grey free again. I'm not going over that graphite because I do need to lift it. Just realised you can't see what I'm doing. Hang on. And I want to go over that with the warm grey free now. Again, this is just following the fur direction. I'm keeping the same pressure and I'm not rotating the pencil yet because I just want a smoother layer to work on. Gonna go back over with the cold grey free. So that I've got this nice base layer and then I can come through and just add a few details. This is quite a simple piece, there's not too much happening, it's just like all the different transitions um, of the fur colour. Which makes it easy for us to focus on obviously just the um, the blending. So I'm going to take the cold grey five. And I'm just doing sharp flicking motions so that I am getting a nice blend and it'll start to add a little bit of detail. And again, following that third direction. We're curving up and around the head. Um, on the warm grey, whoops, warm grey four.
and then I'm just going to take the Payne's Grey and again just flicking out from this darker shadowed area actually we can probably go a bit darker with as well blend that with a cold grey five and then if I take the silver grey just in these lighter sort of highlighted areas it'll help give that kind of shine to the fur And then you can, again, it's just back and forth with the blending. I'm going to do the warm grey four. Just till I'm happy. And because I'm using very light layers, I'm able to get, you know, a lot of layers down. I'm able to go back and forth like this. Now you may find with whatever paper you're using that you've got a really nice blend that you're happy with before, you know, so that you don't need to um, add as many blending transitions as I'm doing here. It is personal preference. Um, work on this, you know, as much or as little as you would like. Um, I'm just going to take the black now. And I'm using this black because, again, this area I know, now that I'm looking, can go darker. And just doing that flicking motion so that we get that seamless transition. might even just come in at the bottom here a little bit more Flick that up. okay this time I'm going to start with a warm grey free and we're kind of coming down to where this ear is so again I'm going to focus on that fur direction nice light pressure well it's not too light a pressure And this is going up to where it's going to get darker because we're going to be working on that ear probably in the next part. I don't think I'm going to do the ear um, now. I'm also sorry if you can hear that wind, it is, the weather has just been, I'm going to be totally British, the weather has been totally horrendous, so we've got really high winds here, again, it's been a bit relentless with the winds, so I'm trying my best to film, but I, I do apologise if you hear the winds or anything banging. I'm going to go over the top of that with the cold grey free. So the warm grey free is just going to give you that warmer base at this point, rather than going in with the bluer base. So you can see here where we've got the bluer base, how how blue more how more blue toned this is. Whereas because we've got that warm base here, it's not you know as blue based. So it's just about you know if you're if you're not sure about what base layers to use, have a play you know on a scrap piece of the paper that you're using an off cut or a spare piece of paper and just you know have have a play around with how the pencils layer because you can see now that this is a diff even though we're using the warm gray free and the cold gray free this color is obviously different to here which is what what we're after we want these different shades we want it to look different Um, and then I am going to take the uh, cold grey four this time. Um, so nice sharp cold grey four. 
again I'm following this fur direction which is a bit more sort of along going sideways across his head here and I'm just doing short pencil strokes but flicking so I want to just kind of start to add a little bit of detail but it's not going to be it's not going to be the most detailed piece this piece is definitely more about you know values because it is quite a smooth dog like when you look at the reference photo we can see the direction the hair is lying but it's not it's not as obvious as seeing every hair stroke which is I think what I quite like about this piece for a tutorial because it just shows you know how we don't you don't need detail you don't need all that detail Okay, and then I'm just going to take the silver grey because again I want this bit here to be lighter. And it's just going to help blend into here as well. You can take the um, um I'm going to go back in with the I'm just trying to work out what colour I want. I want it to go a bit darker, but not too dark. So take the cold grey five, um, and I can just start to sort of blend in here, which will get that nice transition into what will be obviously a darker toned area here. And I think actually what I'll do is I'll just bring this cold grey five down the side of the face here as the base layer. Blend up. Just going to take the warm grey for and help with that blending. And then the Payne's grey because this section is darker. So again, just flicking motion. Nice and light here. Oops. And the whoops, call grey five again. again has just helped to blend really nicely here and then you can take that silver grey from the Caran d'Ache Luminance or the cold grey one if you've only got the cold grey ones just flicking that over again just to soften that edge up all right um, I'm gonna keep um, hold of the warm grey four Again, using the sharp pencil point and if you find that you're not getting the pigment lay down just sharpen your pencil if I'm going to resharpen it, it does help just again coming in flick in here So 
So you can see that that's blending really nicely now. Just going to keep coming through with the one grey four. Just very short pencil strokes. Pressing quite firmly here so obviously I can see the detail coming through. Um, and then we are going to take the cold grey five coming down from this end. And just blending out, making sure everywhere is really nicely blended. Taking the um, silver grey. Just softens these edges. I find that the, the luminance or these waxy pencils just help soften everything out. You can just blend over the top and it'll just help, as I say, blend and soften everything. Taking, uh, well, I'm just going to lift the graphite. And then I am taking my cold grey 2 this time as the base layer. Um, the silver grey again just to help smooth all this out again I've not gone over that bit of graphite so I could come in and just lift that um, and then what I am going to do now is take my cold grey free and we just want to blend upwards into this lighter toned area. So at the moment obviously he looks quite light, a light coloured dog, um, like a light coloured grey dog but once we bring in like contrast against this ear um, and other areas it's really going to sort of make make sense you know with the lighting then it's a bit lighter in colouring areas so don't don't worry if you're doing a piece and you think you've gone in too light because even if we feel we've gone in too light with this once we come in with those darker tones if we need to go in darker we can I'd rather stay you know lighter and be able to darken up than go too dark at first And then again, I'm just going to take my cold grey too. Um, and the warm grey for just to blend here again. Okay, so the top of our Doberman's head now. Again, just going to lift the graphite. Taking my, I'm going to start with my cold grey too. I want to kind of get this top part of the head in so that we can then get the ear drawn in it. In the next part. Um, I'm going to take the cold grey free. Now we've got obviously the bottom of this ear. So we're just going to kind of map in this. It's not a shadow as such. It's more like a little contour at the top of his head.
Again, I'm flicking out so that I get that nice blend. And I'm just going to take the cold grey for, and I just want to darken this bit again. Flicking up. There it is. The cold grey too. And then just at this top part here, I'm going to take the silver grey. And then the warm grey free. Which will just help blend, tip going over with the warm grey, uh, cold grey too. Again, just to help blend this all out. Um, the silver grey okay so that is very quickly the top part of his head drawn in so what I want to do right now is actually come back down his face so I am going to start with the warm grey free and we're going to just create this dark sort of shadowed area coming down his face here um, let me just lift the graphite So what I'm going to do is do sort of little curved C shapes almost because this is kind of the edge of his face. He's got a really nice contour going on here. So we really want to capture that. Um, and then I am going to take my burnt umber so what we're, what we're looking at is here it's blending into some more of the tan markings so this is going to make a really nice transition colour but I don't want it to be too obvious that it's there so by adding it in now we're toning this area and giving it a nice section to transition into just going to flick it down but we can layer our darker colours on the top as well okay I'm also just going to take the cold grey 5 because we do have a nice blue tone So you can see how that just blends in really nicely and then I can take my warm grey 4, you could even go with your warm grey 5, but warm grey 4, actually I may need to go in with that warm grey 5, this is a bit light, so uh, yeah let me take my warm grey 5, so just coming in, warm grey 5, yeah let's darken that up really nicely there. Um, and then that pain's grey because we've added it in here we just want to bring that in and just lighten our pressure as you blend down so that it blends again nice and smoothly into that area um, and then we've got this nice highlight on the side of his face so I'm going to take the cold grey too as the base layer Um, the silver grey over the top and 
Okay, then we can start to blend all of this out. So I'm going to start with the Cold Grey 4 because we want to blend from this darker toned area. And again, we've got this kind of U shape, I guess. We're curving these lines very gently. And then just going to flick out quite again, nice light pressure, just flicking out so this blends. And take the cold grey free and then again um, just that cold grey five just going to flick very gently but you can see how we're getting this nice smooth blend Um, I'm going to keep a hold of this Cold Grey 5, just going to again lift some of that graphite. Um, as we come down, let me just move it up a bit, this side of the face. So again, See, going in quite firmly, but not, not pressing too hard because obviously we want to be able to build on top of. The warm grey four. Just along that edge again, because I want to blend in here on the burnt umber. Very light pressure. And then I'm going to take the Payne's Grey. And then I am also just going to take that black, but not press too hard, just nice and lightly, just to darken part of this cheek up. And then I'm going to just run over the top with a warm grey five. Okay. Um, then we've got his cheek area again, so um, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the ivory just to show you what it looks like with the ivory as a base layer. Again, you could use that granite rose. I do like how the granite rose works as a base layer at the top of his face. Um, and then we're going to take the burnt ochre and I'm going to do kind of sideway motion here. I don't want too much detail, I want it to be quite smooth, so I'm not really lifting the pencil using even pressure as I run across here. So you can see how that ivory gives it more of a yellow base. Okay, I'm just going to run over the top of that once more with the burnt ochre. 
Then we're going to take our sanguine because we really want that nice orange tone. Okay, um, I'm going to take the yellow gold, which again is just going to brighten this area up really nicely. Then the burnt sienna, we've got some more of those rich reds. Back with my sanguine. You could even go over once more with the burnt ochre. And then I'm going to take that burnt umber once more just to flick in and blend from these darker tones into these lighter toned areas. So again, everything is just about looking nice and smooth like so okay again just going to lift oops, the graphite taking the cold grey 2 as our base layer and this is kind of where this highlight comes down the face here the silver grey We're going to take the warm grey free and we're just going to bring this down because we've got more of a warmer tone here. So the warm grey first, warm grey free first, then the cold grey free, which means we can just blend into that nice area here really easily. I'm just going to go back to the, oh, where have I put it? Go back to the warm grey free. Again, curving around here. And then the cold grey for. Again, because it's all about this nice smooth blend you can hopefully you can see that like how smoothly blended this looks and then the cold grey two again Like so. Um, right, I'm gonna stick with, actually, I'm gonna stick with the warm grey, uh, cold grey too, sorry. Just gonna lift that graphite. Um, and I think I want to get this little bit of section done so that um, we've got pretty much half his head there. And then we can do the ear in the next part and then we can move on to the other side of his head. So, uh, cold grey too. Okay, I'm just gonna blend. Or flicking, following that fur direction here. Actually, yeah, I think this will be a nice stopping point once we've got this section drawn in. So that nice base layer of the cold grey turtle. Then this is warm grey free. Oh, 
right so that's kind of the base layers um mapped in what i am going to do now is just take the walnut brown um because we've got this transition from this dark toned area into the uh, obviously the tan um, and I think the walnut brown is going to do a nicer transition here. So just flicking up a little few flicks down. Okay, so that, that's all you need to do. You don't need to do a lot. We just want a few little flicks. I'm going to take the cold grey four, curving. Again, I'm following, everything is about following the fur direction here. A nice sharp pencil to do this. I'm going to take the, cog, uh, the warm grey four, sorry. And then the cold grey two again. Over the top there. Just going back to my warm grey three. I feel like we need like a a darker colour in here. Um, let me take the warm grey. Uh, Cold grey four, sorry. I feel like the, that's not the colour that I'm after. Um, actually, take the Payne's grey 30% from the Caran d'Ache Luminance. So this is like a really nice blue tone. Um, if I was using Polychromos, I would take the Light Ultramarine um, instead of the Payne's grey 30%. But I'm just going to bring in this Payne's grey. 30% this adds a really nice sort of bluish tone um, and then if I just take the cold grey 5 okay, so the cold grey 4 oh, cold grey 5 sorry I'm even just going to take that warm grey five here and the warm grey three again just to help with the blend but just creating this sort of contoured area on the side of his face and then I'm going to come in with that silver grey from the Caran d'Ache Luminance to really highlight but that's a highlight and that this here is a highlight and actually I'm just going to take that cold grey free one last time and just flick okay um taking the Payne's grey now that we've got this area in I just want to come in very light pressure as I do this and just flick up some detail Flick it down. Again, just flicking. 
just nice and lightly and I'm going to do the same with the warm grey 5 which again is just going to add a nice variety of tone into his face. Okay, and I'm going to leave him here, so let me zoom you out. So this is where we are with our Doberman now. In the next part, we're going to make a start on his ear. Um, but yeah, we've got a really nice sort of start to him. Now, this area we'll probably have to work on more once we bring in more of the tan. But I want to get the ear in next and then work across this side of his face before we come down and finish off his muzzle area. Um, but yeah, any questions as always, leave them down below in the comment section. Everything you need is also in the materials list. Um, and um, subscribe if you haven't already because it really does help and like the video. It helps out the uh, channel. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to bring you the next part of our Doberman tutorial. Bye everybody.